open uh, for questions afterwards. Uh, so with that, um, we'll start with uh, Vincent. So uh, Vincent uh, W.J. von Gerfenoy uh, is a publisher and philologist. He published a reference grammar of Old Nubian, uh, published by Peters 2021, um, and is co-founder of Dotao, a journal of Nubian studies. He is the founding member of the Union for Nubian Studies and allegedly involved in the anarchist Nubiology squad. In a parallel life, he, uh, he co-directs scholar and queer-led open access press uh, punctum books. His paper is entitled, Let's Spare the Bureaucrats. Did Meroitic official titles survive in Old Nubian? All right. Uh, thank you, Felica, for that introduction. I think that this is now visible, um, the slideshow, right? So, um, let's spare the bureaucrats. Did Meroitic official titles survive in Old Nubian? Am I audible? The microphone is on, right? Okay, great. Um, so, first of all, I should preface this that uh, this uh, presentation is based on research I've done together with Gilda Ferrandino, uh, who is a specialist of the Meroitic language. So, especially everything that has to do with Meroitic in this paper uh, is thanks to her amazing skill and knowledge and has nothing to do with my very, very mediocre skills in that language, uh, which, by the way, is not yet fully deciphered, as we will uh, see in quite a bit. Um, so, in his discussion of the kinship and relationship between Nubians and Mirrorites, uh, Claude Rie makes the claim that, contrary to previous suggestions, um, the Nubians were relatively late at arriving in the Middle Nile Valley, namely around the fourth century uh, CE, as the Mirrorite kingdom was already in decline. The Nubians subsequently established three kingdoms, kingdoms in the former Mirrorite territory, uh, namely Alwa, Makuria, and Nobadia. And as Rie indicates, Old Nubian shows the presence of two substrate languages, Meritic and a possibly Nara related language from which a number of lexemes have been borrowed. Besides words from the semantic fields of warfare, natural phenomena and the body uh, and domestic life that can be more or less certainly attributed to this substrate complex. There are also multiple titles of offices um, bureaucratic offices, which appear not to be of Nubian origin, or at least have no obvious Nubian etymology. Um, titles such as Samet, Sametingo, Ngash or Ngash, um, Gush and Shung. So you notice also there's a lot of sh sounds in there, which are, you know, uh, uh, dubious. Um, there are also several titles with the suffix shil, such as Ikshil, Choya uh, Ikshil, Jokna Shil and Epir Shil. Because of the paucity of cognates in other Nubian languages, it may be hypothesized that some of these also belong to the substrate complex, borrowed from Meroitic as the Nubians migrated into the Middle Nile Valley and established their new states on top of, you know, health declined Meroitic uh, state, uh, state institutions. And the present uh, uh, paper will look at two Nubian titles, uh, the title Samat or Samet, and the title uh, Sametingo. Whereas the former is to be thought a Nubian parallel of the Greek domesticos, um, there is no satisfactory parallel yet found for Sametingo. And um, we will, or it's been the, the, the suggestion of Gilda and me that uh, both Nubian titles are actually loans for Meritic and we will try to establish this. So, um, Samet or Samat, occurs already before we have any uh, written evidence of Old Nubian, namely on a um, Coptic uh, gravestone, uh, a Coptic foundation inscription that we found uh, in Dendur in the second half of the sixth century. So this is really quite early, the first, supposedly the first translations that we can date securely, it's like eighth century. And then before we actually have written evidence, we're in the 10th century. So. This is, this is, let's say, two centuries before we know of translation activity in Old Nubian. Um, but this really fits into the period in which we assume that the Old Nubian language already took a written form because there are several Old Nubian characters in the, uh, 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 there are several Meritic characters in the Old Nubian alphabet, which means that there must have been a period of bigraphia or like bilingualism, scribes knowing both languages and both script systems which means that this cannot have been too late that they started to write the language. We simply don't have any documents from this period, but here we see on this foundation inscription, uh, Pesamata, uh, the P is a Coptic article, 
And Samata here is the uh, is the specific title, and we're we're dealing here with in certain Epiphanials, the Samat. Um, then the first attestations in Old Nubian that we find uh, are from Kasir Ibrim. And these are relatively late texts. These are all documentary texts uh, and, and legal documents that were found in Kasir Ibrim, uh, which is in the north in Nobedia. Um, and we see that this title is nearly always, if not always, combined with a toponym. That is usually the toponym Pharos, as we see in example number two. Um, where we see Parasin, uh, Parasin Samata, so the, uh, the summit of Paras, uh, and once um, a summit of Tafa. So this is, uh, this is the only time this occurs, but in, in, in all the other attestations is the summit of Paras. And uh, Paras was uh, an important city in Nobedia, if not the capital, it's also the site of the main cathedral. Uh, and possibly also the seat of the eparch of Nobedia. So this, this seems to have been a function that was attached um, to the Nobedian region. And Nobedia in this period uh, was like a sub-kingdom, was incorporated into the larger Makuritan uh, kingdom. It was an eparchate and uh, the capital of, of Makuria was much more south uh, in, in Dongola, where, by the way, recently they also found the Cathedral of Dongola, which is this absolutely astonishing like 26 meter wide apps and nine meter walls and, and so on. So once the thing is excavated, it will be very, very exciting. Um, so that was only found this season. Um, moreover, so like we know Samet is connected to this specific city, uh, the, the capital of this region. Uh, furthermore, um, we have multiple documents in which the office of the Samet was held together with the office of Songoj which is widely thought to be uh, uh, what in Greek is called the eparch. Uh, so like the, the, the viceroy, let's say, of, uh, of Nobedia. Um, and so this suggests again that this was a rather high and important position since it was held by the same person as the one who actually ruled the entire region. So we have, for example, an example for um, Adama, who is the Songoj of Nobedia and the Samat of Pharos. Uh, and then the, in, in example five, referring, I think, to the same person in a different, uh, in a different letter, um, while in the land of Nobedian Adam is Songoj and also Samet of Pharos. So you see that these are, you know, slightly different formulations, um, but they all have this, the same form because these are all standard uh, protocol formulations, which basically say you have a beginning of the, you have the beginning of your legal document, then there's a protocol in, say, in which you say, you know, all of this happened, this document was signed when, uh, this person was king, this person was queen mother, this person was eparch of Nobelia, this person was Samet, this person was scribe, this person was, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, furthermore, we have several attestations of a Samet having uh, officials assigned to them. So that's another sign that this was an important uh, function. So as we can see from example six, a Samet could have a Nesh. We don't know what the Nesh is, but you know, the sun, this particular Samet circle uh, did have one. Um, if we look down further the line of history, we do find a continuation, a continuing use of this summit or summit. So um, there are several state formations uh, after uh, the end of the Nubian Christian kingdoms, and one of them is the Kingdom of Coca, which was um, situated. Um, around basically, uh, uh, let's say, northern Nobedia. It was not very large, um, but it persisted for quite a while as a semi-independent uh, uh, kingdom under Arabic rule. And um, there a summit is attested in, in documents written in Arabic as uh, the head of, or the, the director of a, of a sakia. And the sakia is a particularly important aspect of uh, Nubian society, it's a water wheel and it manages the irrigation of the arable land around the Nile. And so this is a rather essential, uh, essential uh, technological um, tool that is, that is used for, uh, for, for maintaining uh, agriculture in this very narrow strip around the Nile that is inundated, uh, that used to be inundated until the construction of the uh, Aswan Dam. Um, then we have also an early 20th century attestation from Nichols, um, where uh, a Samat is uh, again mentioned as the overseer of a Sakia. Um, and I, I have the nice, um, and I have a nice quote here. So this is from Nichols, 1918. 
Uh, for cultivation purposes, every sakia must have a samat or overseer, and this samat may or may not have any share in the ownership of the land. And this in itself is very interesting because we also have old Nubian documents in which samets have ownership of land. Um, so this again seems to be, you know, continued uh, into the 20th century. Um, in many cases, especially where the owners of the land do not themselves work it, a suitable man is put in to act as samat uh, and receives a fixed share of the crop as his remuneration. The samat is responsible for the working of the water wheel, um, the making of the hedan uh, or the small basis into which the land uh, to be cultivated is div divided up for the purpose of watering it and the sowing of the seeds, right? So this is, you know, several important agricultural functions. Um, and then finally, we find in the uh, uh, Andandi Dictionary of Armbruster from the 60s, also Samet, Director of Cultivation of an Irrigable Estate. And this is very interesting because Andandi was a language that was spoken, let's say, more to the south in the uh, Makuritan area. So this suggests that Samet, or uh, as a function, was known throughout Nubia. So not only in Obedia, right, both uh, 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 Koka and the Kasirim documents are really from the Nobadian, from lower Nubia, let's say. And this apparent, this Andani word is from uh, upper Nubia. So it again suggests that this is a widespread uh, term. Now, we have a second term, which on the surface seems to be related somehow, Samat Ingo. So it's like Samat plus the suffix Ingo. Um, this suffix ingo is not productive in the sense that we don't have any other word where it occurs. It has no transparent etymology. There have been several proposals, uh, none of which are, um, let's say, uh, uh, I think plausible. Um, and let's go through it rather. How am I doing on time, by the way? I have like 10 minutes or something. Yeah, okay, great. So that should work out. Um, we have fewer attestations of this. Uh, we have here uh, Teta, who is a Samatingo. Um, and what we do know is that um, the Samatingo takes precedence over a summit. So like they come on earlier in the protocol. And it's important because it means that this was a higher ranked function. And this was something we should keep in mind uh, later when we look at the Meroitic evidence, um, which we're gonna do right now. So, um, the word samet or samata, uh, uh, as it is generally pronounced in, uh, or at least pronounced by the current Meritic scholars, um, or probably shamata, um, is uh, attested in multiple uh, uh, Meritic documents. Uh, here we have a funeral stella where um, we have the description of the career of the deceased. This is a standard formula, so that's why we more or less know what's going on. Um, we don't know what any of these titles mean. So uh, we don't also know what this adjective karoro means, um, but we do have samata as one of the functions mentioned. Uh, and then the only other function that we know is apota core, uh, core, core, core lesse, which is the uh, envoy of the king. Um, we have the title also in affiliation section um, here. So the great uh, summit, so samata lahwa, langwa, um, of a certain uh, Kwarakili. Um, and again, we find it in the Cursus Honorum. So like Cursus Honorum is like basically the CV of the, uh, of the functionary, in this case, the CV of a Viceroy. Um, so comparable to an eparch of Nobedia, in this case, the Viceroy at Akina, which is in the North, uh, a certain uh, Halala, Halala, uh, I don't know exactly how to pronounce this, Halala, um, I, the, the pronunciation is so different because actually the, the different letters of the transcription that you see are actually syllables. So uh, um, um, the, the Meroitic script functioned like basically like Sanskrit or, or Ethiopian for that matter. Um, so this then leaves us with these two titles, Samata and Samata Langwa. Um, and it is our proposal that these are actually the origins, uh, these unknown Meroitic titles are the origins of the um, old Nubian titles, Samat and Samatingo. So from Samata to Samat is rather straightforward. Uh, you know, all the, the vowels and the consonants are in place. This is a straightforward loan. Um, for Samatingo, we, uh, uh, this is a little bit more, um, let's say, 
in, in, insecure. Um, of course, the first part is the same, uh, Samet. But then the question is, how come we from? How do we come from a Langwa or Lungwa, Lungwa to uh, uh, Ingo? Um, well, first of all, there is uh, already attested uh, uh, something like Griffith's Law, which uh, says that um, adjacent uh, to a uh, to a dental, the uh, lateral is assimilated. So we can also posit this here. Um, and we have strong evidence of a rounded vowel because of the O, right? So this could very well be a reflex of this labialized uh, velar, uh, velar nasal. And the velar nasal is nicely preserved. So it, it not, it's not unlikely that this is, um, that this is uh, a, correct, uh, a correctly uh, proposed loan. Uh, moreover, um, the fact that in Old Nubian the Sametingo was took precedence over the summit works very nicely with the fact that a great summit takes precedence over a summit. Furthermore, it seems from our documents that the great summit or Sametingo um, was not attached to Nobelia, not attached to Faros, but was attached directly to the central government. And so what we're dealing with is, is probably like something like a local director of cultivation for Nobedia, sometimes attached to the Eparchate. And we have something like a minister of agriculture, basically, uh, the Samatingo, who was uh, based in Dongola, uh, close to the royal court. Um, that this term also has persisted makes a lot of sense. Even if you decide to completely overthrow your state apparatus, the one thing that is constant along the Nile is this need for good management of agriculture. Uh, this is evidenced by the persistence of the term until the 20th century. Um, and I think it is not a strange thing to think that you may want to keep this type of technical knowledge in your government, even if you're coming in from the, uh, from the desert and taking over uh, and establishing a new state. So it is also not unlikely that they would indeed take over the, both the knowledge and the terminology that comes with agriculture uh, uh, at the establishment of the Nubian kingdom. So what is really nice is that we seem to have evidence for 2000 years of continued use of a single term from Meroitic to Old Nubian to post, uh, post Makuritan Arabic speaking uh, uh, kingdoms up to the present day in the current Nubian languages, uh, where this term persists in more or less the same, with more or less the same meaning. There are no longer ministers, but there's still people that manage these, manage these agricultural areas with this specific uh, Term. And I think that that in itself is really, uh, really quite amazing. And um, well, thank you for your, uh, for your attention. Well, let me stop sharing. Thank you so much, Vincent. That was wonderful. Um, well, I'll do my applause manually because I can't find the icon right now.